Hi guys, I'm Jeb Bonder here and welcome back to another fifth and last segment. So, 2017 Origin has kicked off, game one is done, great result for New South Wales. I didn't think it would be quite as emphatic as it was. In this show we're going to be taking a look at the player ratings, how everyone rated the key players of the game, who really influenced it. And what's next? What happens next to both New South Wales and the Queensland team? Alright, so let's get straight into it. New South Wales came out with a 28 points of four victory. I think that was their biggest uh, ever margin of victory in Brisbane, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Maloney, Pierce, Sofita, Hayne, and Tedesco all getting the tries for New South Wales. Corey Oates getting a solitary try for Queensland. Let's look at the key players. I had a performance first of all. Well, I think in the game as a whole, I'd say New South Wales are two outstanding players for New South Wales. Andrew Fafita, he, uh, he is a man mountain out there, and James Tedesco. It's all about Fafita being you know, a big chunky forward. He did his is working burst, which is fair enough, you know. But I've had some, some stats on them first 23 minutes of the game and six tackle breaks. A try assist, obviously, James Maloney's try assist, and he made 96 meters all in the first 23 minutes stint of what was a very, very intense first half of rugby league. It was incredible. Tedesco, I feel as the game went on, he got more and more into it, he played extremely well. That second half defensively was just awesome. It felt like it was two or three of them on, on the pitch. He really grew into his role. He took his try extremely well. He played very, very well indeed. Let's just go through the rest of the team and sort of pick out highlighted players. So, in you know, New South Wales, you've got, obviously got sort of their talk about Jared Hayne, for example. He started off a little bit slow defensively. He took advantage of him a few times, particularly early on. He kind of made up for that at the end. Uh, not just saying the L up. A bit of a head slam to the ground, you know, a bit petulant, I think, but I think he wanted to make a little bit of a statement towards the end of the game. He took his try very well. He ball in hand, he was brilliant. Ball in hand, he was so, so good. He did very, very well. He took his try extremely well. Uh, let's go into the halves, Maloney and Pierce. Maloney was just solid. Again, took his try well. Good support him as a Pierce, actually. So both their tries were fairly similar. Just inside lines, was a ball runner. They both played. Okay, Maloney was a solid, good goal kicker. Controlled the game well when Pierce wasn't on. I wasn't overly impressed with Pierce, really. I thought he handled the occasion fairly well, considering his pretty appalling state of origin record that he's got. He handled the occasion fairly well. But for me, his defence was just was just poor. He was trying to tackle bigger guys up top. You know, for me, it's just stupid. Like, I don't understand why he does it. He got brushed off so many times. He ran the game while attack. He took his try well. I thought his game ended. He got knocked out. Uh, a little bit of a cheap shot, I think. But, you know, he, I thought he played okay. And I think he actually deserves to play in game two. He, should, he certainly shouldn't be dropped. I think he's done enough to warrant selection for game two and probably game three as well. But consistency... Um, let's go into the forwards for New South Wales. Obviously, Tyson Vizal. I was expecting a massive game from him. Um, he hit the line hard. He didn't really produce as much as I thought he was going to, but he played his role reasonably well. You know, I think there's more to come from him. Uh, Boy Corden, obviously, first game as captain. He was solid defensively, just very, very good. Yeah. I, you know, he's just he just again just got through his work, same as Josh Jackson, exactly the same, just got through his work, didn't, didn't let up into your front row. Aaron Woods, I don't know, I just I want more from Aaron Woods. I think this first hit up that he did the game, he put his head down, he just charged, he went for it, and he made a few meters. Then every carry after that, he was just hitting and turning, and trying to offload, and not really offering anything. His hits weren't. His hits weren't that big, and he didn't really make much of a physical impact. For a big guy, he doesn't make much of a physical impact. I want to see more from him, more aggression from him. Nathan Peets, what a game that guy had. He didn't do anything flashy. He didn't do anything flashy. He didn't make any breaks. He didn't do any outstanding kicks, anything like that. But the work rate that guy puts in, the work rate. I think he ran over eight kilometers in the game, which is... Well, from what I read, the highest amount anyone's ever run, 
uh, since GPS has been introduced into set of origin game. So he put a shift in last night, given that he looks stuffed at the end. He's definitely in for games two and three. Um, and as we've always spoken about for, for, uh, for Fita, again, that guy played extremely well. Let's head over to Queensland now and think about how their players play. Darius Boyd didn't do anything wrong. Really, he was getting he was solid, probably seven, six, seven out of ten. He didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't really get a lot of opportunity with the ball the way New South Wales defended. They pushed hard and they pressured up the middle. So he didn't really get a lot of time and space like he's used to. Corey Oates, try scorer, he was targeted with uh, the kicks at the back. He dealt with them very, very well. Other than returning kicks, he didn't really do a lot. He's called his try. But other than that, he didn't really do a lot. Then Gagai, however, on the other wing, that guy was phenomenal. He was probably Queensland's best player by quite some some distance. He ran hard, drove that Queensland team forward when they when they needed it. Unfortunately, not a lot of the players really did the same as him. Then Gagai, he was very very good. As a Newcastle fan, I love it. I think it's really brilliant. Unfortunately, he's going to South next year, obviously, so it's going to be a big loss. But great performance from Dan Gagai. Centres for Queensland is disappointing and sort of nullified by the New South Wales centres. Into the halves, um, Milford and Cooper Cronk did okay. Milford actually did okay. Ball in hand, very, very dangerous. You know, he's one of those guys, if you're a New South Wales supporter, Anthony Milford gets five yards of space, ball in hand, you hold, you hold your breath a little bit. And it happened a couple of times. Maybe could have brought a few other players in the play a little bit better. But that's where Cooper Cronk kind of came in. He really brought his teammates into the game, where maybe Milford didn't necessarily have to do that. Cooper Cronk, he was just Cooper Cronk. Just good. Didn't do anything wrong, really. Just didn't do anything wrong. His kick for the Quarters, his try was brilliant. Spot on. Was exactly what you'd think. Unfortunately for Cronk, he was behind that pack that just couldn't really get going. Just couldn't get going. But even so, even though those forward pack couldn't really get forward, he still did an outstanding job. Uh, Cam Smith, quiet. I mean, he led from the front, but he was quiet. He made his tackles. I think it kind of summed up a little bit when he took when he missed that first conversion. I think it kind of summed it up a bit. I think he's. I think he missed JT outside him. Cooper Cronk, don't get me wrong, is a fantastic player in his own right. Brilliant player, but I think he, Cam Smith, missed the direction that Jonathan Thurston gives that side. And I'm not sure if that means I'm going to rush JT back next game. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Going to the forwards, you know, I think the forwards were a bit, I'm not sure, a bit hit and miss. McCulloch, you know, did okay. Gillette, just Gillette, tackled hard, ran hard. I think he missed his crucial tackle to, for a try, coming which one. Nate Miles, is, is he done? Is Nate Miles' origin career, is he, is, he, is he game two? I'm not sure, let me know guys, you think Nick Marr should be around for game two? Um, and Dylan Napa, in that first sort of 10 minutes, well, this guy looks like he's been playing Origin for the last five, six, seven years. Like, he was solid and he will definitely see him around for a few years to come. Wouldn't be surprised. Joshua Parley has just gone back a little bit. Joshua Parley, again, just a cannibal, just brutal. That guy is extremely good and extremely tough. So, what next for these teams? What next? Let's start with New South Wales. Okay, going to game two, what are they going to be doing next I think really it's more of the same it's doing again what they've done in game one it'd be in Sydney this time they have the crowd advantage Queensland they're going to come after them I think a little bit but I'm not sure if Queensland they're going to have enough to beat New South Wales New South Wales can play the same enthusiasm and pace again I think they're going to have too much for Queensland do they make changes do New South Wales look at changing that winning team from the face of it, you say, probably not. Why would you change your winning formula? But I think there are certain aspects of that team that they could look at perhaps changing a little bit. Blake Ferguson, for me, was disappointing. He obviously got a jump by Corey Oates from Square that scored that try. Blake Ferguson was sort of a bit in no man's land. A couple of times when Josh Duden came down the right-hand side and he wanted Blake Ferguson to come in the inside, he didn't. He stayed outside with about a yard of space. Why do that? The few times for me that Blake Ferguson just didn't really bring it. Brett Morris had a much better game. And I'm, you know, I was not surprised that he had that kind of game, but I, you know, I'm pleased for him that he did. But I think Blake Ferguson's probably maybe the guy the most whose position is under threat. Like I said before, I think Mitch Pierce, yes, he had a mixed night, uh, but I believe he deserves a, a shot at Origin 2, and I think he'll stay there. 
I don't believe Laurie Daly will make any changes to that side, barring injuries, of course. Um, but I think they should probably have a look at Blake Ferguson and maybe look at replacing him with someone else. Queensland, well, this one is a bit different, and this is a position that Queensland have not been in for a very, very, very long time. Do they make wholesale changes to this team? Do they scrap the tried and tested method of picking players that they know have done the job in the past? Do they stick with loyalty? Do they just chuck it out of the window and start again? Well, I think maybe a little bit of, bit of a mix. I think Nate Miles, I think he's done. I don't think he can any longer keep up with the pace, particularly the pace that New South Wales now bringing with their new team and their younger team. I think when Nate Miles is up against the likes of, say, Paul Gallen, Luke Lewis and that kind of lot, yes, he can keep up with that pace because he's about the same age, but the New South Wales have brought in a younger team. I just don't think he can catch up. He'll probably maybe eat my words in game two and have a storm, but I don't think he should be there. I think New, uh, Queensland should be should blood young players like New South Wales and I think Cohen Hess, people like him, like Cohen Hess has made a massive difference to, to that side. I believe just the aggression he brings. Um, Valentine Holmes, do you bring him in? Where do you bring him in? Who do you drop out? Because I mean, as I said, Corey Oates didn't have a bad game. Dan Gagai had a good game. Do you move Dan Gagai into the centres perhaps? Instead of say Justin O'Neill who had a pretty poor game. I think you I think that's probably a change that they might make and then look at moving Valentine Holmes onto the wing. That moves me on to my next point. Did they bring Billy Slater back? Did they miss Billy Slater? I don't think he would have made a massive difference to the result. And these other guys took their chances, where Queensland didn't. Did they bring Billy Slater in for that experience? He's been there, done it so many times. He's won so many series. Did they bring him in and move, move um, Darius Boyd to the wing instead and maybe drop Corey Oates and have Valentine Holmes Billy Slater and Darius Boyd to back three. That would be a hell of a back three. You move Dan Gagai into the centres. I think Dan Gagai into the centres has given a bit of, a bit of freedom to Rome. I think he'd do some damage to New South Wales. My other point, the last one for Queensland certainly, is did they rush JT back? Now, we all know that this is JT's last Origin series. If he's fit in time, he'll play game three. But does he want to go out of that? This series could be over in Sydney in a couple of weeks time does he want to make his one last origin game in a dead rubber game that they've already lost I, I don't think he's going to want to do that I really don't I think he's got too much pride to do that he cares too much I wouldn't be surprised if we saw JT playing Sydney in a couple of weeks I know his, his rotator cuff shot is done but I and he says he doesn't want to risk the rest of the season game one of origins where he missed out I see him back in the next game I really do I think he's going to want to turn the tables on this next game, make it a three-game series, go out with a bang. One last note, guys. Yes, New South Wales won. I and mean, it looks like a comfortable victory, 28-4. to four. And, You know, the papers are saying this is a change of the, of the dynasty. It's you know, time to change. I don't believe it has. And New South Wales made, from my account, three or four try-saving tackles. Josh Duga made one to desk. I think made two. You know, if they had scored those... It would have been probably 28 22 or maybe even 28 all you know and and so people are highlighting the result but it could have been so much closer than that new south wales took about 90 percent of their chances i think there was maybe one chance that they didn't take queensland had a similar amount of chances and didn't take them if they had taken those chances it would have been a hell of a lot closer and i think game two they will probably take those chances. So New South Wales cannot let up and they, they've got to come again with the same pace, same intensity, everything. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Do you enjoy the game? Do you think there should be any changes to either team? Let me know what you think and I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.